This is actually a really fun problem because, because it involves multiple things and it can be applied in a lot of different ways. So let me explain the problem and then I'll explain variations in the problem then I'm gonna solve it. So in this case, I have a rope swing. So suppose there's a person uh, on a rope swing, they start from here from rest, they let go and they go wah, and they swing down here, and then at some point maybe they let go, maybe they don't, it's not a big deal. Uh, and the question is, what's the maximum tension in the string right there? I like that problem. Now, I, I like it also because you could replace the person with just a mass swinging, right? It's a pendulum. Or you could, it could be Tarzan. It could be Spider-Man. Okay, so we have a lot of different options for what would happen here. And, and a lot of people actually have done these rope swings where it's tied to a tree and you swing out over some water and you let go, whatever. Okay, so where is the maximum tension in the string first? Oh, why do I like this? I like this because this uses forces and energy. Okay, let's draw a force diagram right here for the person. So we have the person, we have the downward gravitational force, and then we have the tension in the string. And are those forces adding up to zero? And the answer is no, they cannot add up to zero. There's no way you can have two forces, the only two forces, there's only those two forces, nothing else is touching the person right when they let go. There's no way those two forces can add up to zero because they're not in opposite directions. So there's nothing that's gonna cancel the forces in this direction because there's a component of the gravitational force in that direction. And in fact, that force causes the person to move uh, and increase and accelerate that way. And so they start speeding up until they get down to the bottom part. So is this the, is this the maximum tension? Well, you can think of it this way. Look right here, the person does not accelerate in this direction. I know that because uh, they're stuck in the circle. Unless the string stretches or breaks or something weird happens, then the acceleration in this direction is zero. Uh, so this string is a force of constraint. It prevents the person from getting further away than the length of the, the cable rope. So that means that if I look right here, that's the angle theta, then the tension is in that direction and there's a component of the gravitational force. So the tension here is gonna be less than the gravitational force. So that's not gonna be the maximum tension case. What about down here at the bottom? Well, at the bottom, let's draw a force diagram. Now, one of the things that we kind of cheat at is to move, to change this uh, axis of rotation. I'm actually gonna call that X and that Y. And then down here, I'm gonna call this Y and that X and that's just to make things easier, uh, but that's fine. So here I have the tension pulling up, and then I have the gravitational force pulling down. And you'll notice I already drew the tension as greater. The tension has to at least be equal to the weight, right? If the gravitational force is greater than the tension, then there would be a downward acceleration, and the person would not be on that rope. There's no way, okay? And in fact, the tension is greater than the gravitational force because at this instant, the person is moving in a circle. If the person's moving with circle with some velocity v, then there will be an upward acceleration of v squared over r. This is the circular acceleration, centripetal acceleration. If you have an object moving in a circle, then the direction of the acceleration is towards the center of the circle, and the magnitude depends on the velocity and the radius of curvature, which in this case is l. Okay, so in order to make the person accelerate towards the center of the circle, the tension has to be greater than the gravitational force, and this is where the tension is going to be the maximum. So I could go ahead and say this, F net Y is T minus MG equals M V squared over L. I'm going to go ahead and put L as the radius of the circle. So in this case, the Y component of the tension is positive T. The y component of the gravitation force is negative mg, and the acceleration is in the positive direction. Mass and acceleration, I just put in r. I, instead of r, I put in l. Okay. And so I could solve this for t, and I get t equals mg plus mv squared over l. And you can see that that's the weight, and then we have this extra term in there. But you can see the problem, hopefully, and that is what is the velocity? How fast is a person going? So this is the part where we're going to use 
the work energy principle. So let me just redraw that picture. That's bad. Okay, so here's our swing. Right there. And this is starts off with an angle theta, and this is uh, where we want to find the velocity at the bottom. So let's call this position one and this position two. I want to now use the work energy principle. This says the work is the change in energy. But in order to do that, I need to define my system. So in if I don't know what my system is, I can't calculate the work, I can't calculate the change in energy, because it depends on what I'm including in my system. So let's include in the system just the person plus the earth. And that might seem weird to include the earth, okay? But it is there for a reason, a very important reason. First of all, if I have a person in the system with a mass, then that means that that person can have kinetic energy. So I can have a change in kinetic energy, where kinetic energy is one half m v squared. It's a scalar, right? So this is a velocity vector, but you take the magnitude and you square it. If I include the person and the earth, there's a gravitational force, here's the earth. There's a gravitational force between those two pulling that way. And so it doesn't do work on the system because it's an internal force, but I can have a change in potential energy. So because I have both of these in there, then I have uh, delta u equals m g delta y. So the change in gravitational potential energy on the surface of the Earth is the mass times the gravitational field where g is the scalar value 9.8 newtons per kilogram and delta y is the change in y position. And so that's important. That's why we include the Earth in there. Okay, what about the rope? The rope clearly matters too. Well, I'll include the work done by the rope. Okay, so let's just draw uh, at some point, here's the gravitational force, and then there's the tension like that. And so I want to calculate the work, and I want to calculate the change in energy going from position one to two. So why do we use, why is work energy so great here? Because one, we don't care about time, and two, this, this is a not even a straight path, so it would be really difficult to not do work energy. Really is, at the algebra-based physics level, there's no other way to do this problem. I said that, and that's not true. Of course, there's always a way to figure things out. I apologize. You can do it. Okay, so let's look at the work. We define work as due to a force is F dot delta R, where F is the force, delta R is the displacement, and that's the dot product right there. You could write this as the magnitude of F times the magnitude of delta R times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between delta R and delta F. Now here's the important part. What if I want to calculate the work done by tension? Well, here's the tension force, and here's delta R going that way. And no matter which, delta R is not constant. It changes direction, and tension's not constant. It changes both magnitude and direction. But at every point along this path, T and delta R are perpendicular. So that means that theta is going to be 90 degrees. So the work done by the tension is going to be the magnitude of the tension force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of 90 degrees, which is equal to zero. So the tension doesn't do any work on the system. That's a really good bonus right there. So now we can write work equals zero. Now we don't do work done by gravity because it's part of the system, remember? So it's not, we can't do that. And there's no other forces acting on the system. So it's just work done by tension and then the change in energy. So it's gonna be change in kinetic plus change in gravitational potential energy. The change is important, okay? It is important to write it out that way. I can write this as K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. So this is the change in kinetic energy. This is the change in gravitational potential energy. Now, right here, um, if they start from rest at the highest point, then I can say K1 is zero, right? Because if the velocity is zero, then the kinetic energy is zero. What about the potential? It actually doesn't matter what the potential is. Um, we can actually pick where we want the potential to be equal to zero. Um, so it, it kind of helps to, to um, pick something that, that is simple 
And there's actually two logical places to put y equals zero. I could put y equals zero right here, or I could put it up here. Um, I kind of, just to be fun, I think I'm gonna put it up here, okay? But that means that this is gonna have a negative y value and a negative potential, and down here it's gonna have a negative potential also, which is fine, all I care about is a change in potential. Okay, so let's write out this equation. Zero equals k2, which is one half m v2 squared. That's that velocity that we want to solve for. Okay, then I'm gonna get u2 is mg y2. Okay, so what's the y value right here? That's gonna be minus m g l, right? Because if this is at y equals zero, and this is a circle, the distance from here to there is l. So, but it's negative, so I have negative m g l. What about this one? What's the y value for this? Well, we can draw a little triangle right here, like that. I know this side is L. That's my angle theta. So what's this side right here? That's gonna be L cosine theta. So I get minus, which is gonna be plus, minus a negative, plus M G L cosine theta. Uh, so just so you know, if I, if I wrote this as y equals zero, I would need to find this height, and you would actually get the same thing, a difference in L cosine theta and L. But I wanna solve for V, so let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add this to both sides, I'm gonna subtract that from both sides, uh, and that's fine. So I get one half M V two squared equals M G L minus M G L cosine theta. And I did use the theta twice, I know that. Okay, I use that as the angle between the, the tension and the displacement, and that's the starting angle theta. I know. And now I can divide both sides by the mass, cancels. I can multiply both sides by two and take the square root. I get V2 equals the square root of two times G L times one minus cosine theta. I factored out the G L, I just did that on the fly. You notice the mass cancels, so if I have two different people in the swing, uh, they have the final, same final speed at the bottom. Let's just leave it like that. Uh, now I want to solve for the tension, which I already said, T equals mg plus mv squared, that's actually v2 squared, over L. So if I put in this v2, I get T equals mg plus m, and then I need to square the square root, so it's just going to be 2gl times 1 minus cosine theta, all of that over L. And you'll notice that the length actually cancels, which is really kind of weird, but the thing is, like, the longer this is, the faster they're going. But the longer it is, the, the lower the acceleration, too. So I, I think it's kind of weird that it cancels, but it does indeed cancel. And you look right here, I get mg, that's a force, and then here I get m times g is a force, 1 and cosine theta have no units, so that's all cool. Let's just squeeze in my, my actual calculation in here. T equals the mass, 70, times G, 9.8, plus 70 times 9.8 times 1 minus, or I did 2, 2, I'm thinking right here if I have 2, G, that's fine. 1 minus cosine theta, or 90 degrees. So let's put that in the calculator. I want to move this so you can see it the best. What am I right there? I can't see, though. Clear. Okay. So I'm just going to do it the long way. 70 times 9.8 plus 2 times 70 times 9.8 times parentheses 1 minus cosine 15. 15, close parentheses, close parentheses, and that should be it. And I get 7, 3, 3 newtons. And let's just compare that to the weight. If they're, if they're hanging there stationary, then it would just be the weight would be the tension, right? Because they're not accelerating at all. So if I do 70 times 9.8, I get... 686, so the tension is greater in this case. The end. So I think that was a fun problem though, okay. Um, 
Yeah. And you know, I did I picked an angle 15 degrees because a lot of times when they use the pendulum equation, which you don't really want to use here, uh, that's the maximum angle that it will work. This doesn't care. You can have any starting angle up here to work the problem. Also, you don't even have to start from rest. You can start with some velocity. Spider-Man, when he starts his new web, he's already moving. Okay, so uh, it does not have to have a zero velocity here. The only thing that would change is this value right here. Okay, so that's that fun tension, circular motion, work energy problem.